Hi, what's up everyone? My name is Lawrence. I'm the product manager of the 2020 MakeS Premier Ultimate Warrior. Today I'm going to introduce the program and I'm also going to um, explain the, the detailed rules and finally I'm going to do a Q&A session for you guys. Um, firstly, uh, let's look at the program. Well, um, as uh, all of you may know that MakeS Premier is the highest level of all the MakeS programs. Um, uh, it's targeting the high school students and as well as the university students. Um, so this year's theme is Ultimate Warrior and the type of the competition is dual meet where you have uh, two alliances versus each other um, and uh, of course like I said before it's the highest level of our robotics competition so the difficulty level is going to be the highest as well. Um, so in this year's MakeS Premier Ultimate Warrior, uh, uh, we, we actually issue an official Premier kit for you to buy and for you to prepare for the competition and our age. In terms of the age, we actually have two groups. Like I said before, the first one will be targeting the high school students. So if you are from age of 14 to 18, you are eligible to participate in MakeS Premier Ultimate Warrior. And the second group is for the post-secondary group. Uh, it's targeting all the university students and college students as well. As long as you are registered full-time students, um, you are eligible to um, participate in the competition. And for the teams, uh, two to eight students will form a team and then each team will have one to two mentors as well. And in terms of the, the match uh, format, will actually have four stages. The first stage is going to be the automatic stage. During the automatic stage, uh, the, the robots has to run the preset automatic program to finish certain missions. And for the post-secondary group, the automatic stage is going to be 45 seconds. Whereas for the high school group, the automatic stage is going to be 30 seconds. And the next stage, right after the automatic stage, is the menu stage. Uh, for the menu stage, the post-secondary group uh, is going to be 75 seconds. And for the high school group, it's going to be 90 seconds. Okay, um, so in the automatic stage, uh, the duration of the automatic stage for post-secondary group is 50 seconds longer than uh, the high school group. Whereas in the menu stage, um, on the contrary, uh, the post-secondary group will be 50 seconds shorter than the counterpart of the high school group. Okay, um, so uh, after the menu stage, we'll have a modification stage. Uh, it will be 60 seconds. Uh, you might ask, why do I need to modify my robots? Like, I don't have to, but why is such stage exists? Uh, because right after the modification stage is the final stage. And um, in the final stage, there are certain missions that you have to modify your robots. Uh, to finish the mission, okay? So that's a prerequisite. So after the modification stage, we'll have the final stage. The final stage takes 90 seconds uh, for both groups. Uh, in terms of the arena size, uh, the width of the arena is going to be 5.4 meters, and for the length of the arena, it's going to be 6.6 .6 meters, okay? Um, and the uh, arena frame is going to be slightly larger than that. So we will also have to consider the, the positions for all the operators and observers to stand uh, just right next to the arena. So you actually have to uh, get a bigger space for, to install the arena. Uh, let's talk about the functional areas. Uh, let's just follow the numerical orders. The first one will be the starting areas that's located at the located at the four corners of the arena. Um, and we also, secondly, we have the isolation area, which uh, were uh, the initial positions for all the pins. And the third is the central barrier. Um, in, essentially, it's just the barrier that divides the, the, the arena into half. Um, and we also have number four, the impatient area, uh, which are the uh, initial positions for the five uh, black cubes, okay? And number five, we have the medicament placement area. These are the uh, initial positions for, uh, for these two cubes, these two yellow cubes, the larger one um, and the smaller one, they all can be used 
um, to, to be tossed to the, um, the opponent's sides to knock down the pins of the opponent. Okay? And number six is going to be the consulting area. Um, so initially, all the five alphabet cubes like you, like you have seen here, uh, they will be initially positioned on the ground onto the report printing area. But in the autom automatic stage and the final stage, you will actually have to uh, identify the order of the alphabet cubes and you have to lift it up and then place it onto a platform. And that platform, uh, we call that consulting area. Okay? And number seven is going to be the report printing areas. These are the initial uh, positions uh, for, for the five alphabet cubes. Okay? So the five alphabet cubes will be uh, randomly ordered uh, and placed onto the report printing area at first. Uh, let's look at the starting area. Uh, the length and the width for the starting area are 800 millimeters, and these are the initial position, initial length requirements, length and width requirements for the robots. So after, um, so after you put your robots uh, uh, into the starting area, we'll just have a sense that if your robots uh, have met the size requirements, and we also have the isolation areas. It's actually a two decker, uh, 3D area. Uh, the, the lower decker will be just on the mat and it will be a shaded areas. Uh, if you look at that, there will be 12 circles onto that. So those are the initial position for the pins. So there will be 12 uh, pins on the lower floor and there will be 12 pins on the upper floor as well. So um, each side will have 24 pins in total. And also the central barrier, uh, it's divided into five sections. And uh, the middle sections, it's, a, it's about a meter's, width, a meter's wide. And uh, it's actually, it's, it's got two hollow sections um, in between. So uh, you, you can actually um, toss the, uh, the yellow cubes um, to, like, through the hollow sections of the central barrier and, and throw them towards the, um, the opponent's side. Um, uh, for the medicament placement area, so for each medicament placement area, uh, there will be 15 small, smaller yellow cubes and there will be 10 uh, bigger yellow cubes uh, for each side, uh, for each uh, medicament placement area, my mistake. And um, so there will be two medicament placement areas for each side. So there will be uh, 20 bigger yellow cubes in total and 30 smaller yellow cubes in total. And in terms of the consulting areas, it's, uh, it's a platform um, that's installed inside the central, as part of the central barrier, okay? So it will be uh, at the side of the central barriers. Um, so you actually have to lift the alphabet cubes up and then place onto the consulting areas or platform, okay? Um, so the inpatient areas, like I said, like you can see here, there are five squares um, on, on the mat. So, you, uh, so those are the initial positions for, for the black cubes. And um, uh, for the report printing areas, quite similarly, there will be five um, squares as well. And those are the areas for the alphabet cubes, for the five alphabet cubes, okay? And let's talk about the props. Uh, as I said before, there will be two uh, attacking cubes. So you can use these, uh, you can toss it to um, the opponent's side and to knock down the, the pins. Okay, so they are quite powerful, especially the bigger one. Um, if you don't have enough power to throw them, uh, to knock down the pins on the upper floor, don't worry about it. They are quite like powerful because you, you ha if you've got the momentum, if you just throw them towards the, towards, um, the opponent's side, they can just use that momentum to knock down the pins on the lower floor. So they are quite powerful in that sense. Um, we'll also have the alphabet cube. Uh, let's take this as an example. So there will be six, uh, there will be six uh, faces in the cube, of course, and all six faces will be uh, pasted with the letters. Okay, so there's no hole. Okay, and um, also we have the black cube. It doesn't have anything on it. It's just a simple black cube. Okay, uh, and the pins as well. Uh, the pins, the, if you have participated in the, um, the Makers Challenge or Makers Premier last year, you will, you will be very familiar with these pins. They are exactly the same. They're using EVA uh, material and uh, they're about uh, 285 millimeters height. And um, so these are the pins, okay? 
And we also have the light box. I didn't show, I didn't bring it here because it's 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 huge. Okay, so it's it's actually it forms a mechanism with the with with, with the square groove. I'm going to introduce later. So there is a limit switch right here, as you can see. Okay, so after after you insert uh, the black cube into the square groove or square box, the limit switch uh, will be pressed automatically okay so it's got a cable connected with the light box so if you have successfully inserted five out uh, five black cubes into the square box square box right here um the the light box will be automatically illuminated okay and in terms of the technical standard like i said before uh the maximum initial size for the robots uh, uh the length uh, the initial length for the robots is 800 millimeters, and the width of the robots is 800 millimeters as well. Okay, and the height, the height is 800 millimeters as well. So all three uh, parameters are all 800 millimeters. And after modification, uh, the the length and the width will stay the same. They all they still you have to you have to fulfill the 800 millimeters requirements, and but the height is going to be unlimited. Okay, so if you so why do I say that you will have to modify your robots before you, um, before you finish this certain mission in the final stage? Because these square box are actually installed quite high. Um, so uh, the clearance between the ground and the, the, the bottom board is about 1.1 meters. So your robots, so before you modify your robots, um, it's never going to reach that high. So you actually have to uh, modify your robots uh, perhaps install a higher mechanical arms in the in the final stage to finish this certain mission okay so you can't actually do that uh, before the modification stage because we have the initial size requirements and for the size requirements we are talking about the maximum extended size okay so it's not the initial uh, so you have to fully um, expand your robots uh, for example if you have mechanical arms or something like that you actually have to expand it and it has to be within uh, the size requirements okay so that's a different concept other uh, to uh, the common robotics competition like first and wax um, they don't have that kind of requirements but we do uh, you have we are talking about the maximum size maximum extended size requirements so your robots have to uh, fully expand it and still needs to be uh, within the size requirements okay um, so the weight of the robots uh, during the whole match, uh, whether it's before the modification stage or after the modification stage, it's all, it's all going to be 20 kilograms, okay? And for the, uh, the quantity of the robots, of course, each team will only have to, will only, will only can uh, prepare one robot. So you can't bring two robots to the, um, to the, comp to the competition. Um, so uh, at least one of these robots will be disqualified, okay? Uh, let's talk about the, the way to score, okay? So during the automatic stage, the first way to score is of course uh, knocking down the pins, okay? By using, by using the bigger yellow cube and the smaller uh, yellow cube. So each pin is worth 20 points, okay? And the second way to score during the automatic stage is, the, um, is to identify and place uh, the alphabet cube onto the consulting areas. Okay, so so initially the order of the alphabet cubes won't be like this, not won't be like uh, from left to right M A K E X, but it will be pretty random. I would say something like something like that. Okay, so that's something that you are going to see before the match starts. So your robots uh, during the automatic stage it needs to use its vision sensor or its camera to identify uh, where, uh, to identify these alphabet cubes and then place it onto uh, the consulting area, onto the platform, just right above it, okay? In a correct order from left to right, M-A-K-E-X, okay? So these are the, these are the second uh, way to score during the automatic stage. And each of the alphabet cube is worth 30 points. And because we are also judging uh, the order, so you, you would need at least two cubes to score, okay? So you can't, uh, so for example, if you only put one 
Alphabet Cube onto the consulting area. So at the end of the automatic stage, when the referee is calculating the points, you won't get any score, okay? Because we can't decide the order with only one Alphabet Cube. We'll at least need two, something like that. MA from left to, um, sorry, from left to right. Uh, can't even lift up this, okay? Like that, you, you will score. And uh, it doesn't have to be right next to each other, okay? So it doesn't have to be M and A. If the order is correct from left to right, for example, like that, M and X, uh, so, the, uh, so it also um, meets, uh, so it also follows the order, so it will also, also um, count. Uh, in terms of the menu stage, of course, you can keep knocking down the pins keep knocking down the pins and you can finish the unfinished alphabet cubes uh, left out on the um, at the automatic stage. You can just uh, keep uh, bringing them onto, uh, placing them onto the uh, consulting area, okay? By just using your Bluetooth controller, your Bluetooth controller will control the robots to, to do this um, sort of manually, okay? Um, and in the modification stage, okay, so if your robot has returned uh, to the starting area, at the end of the menu stage, you are eligible to modify your robots, okay? So it has a prerequisite to, to modify your robots. It needs, so the robots needs to be partially inside the starting area before you can modify it. If, it's a robot, if the robot is outside the starting area, there's no, there's no way you can, you can modify the robots, okay? And after the modification stage, it will be final stage. Uh, of course, keep knocking down the pins. They are worth 20 points each as well. So the value of the pins will be the same. And um, the second mission will also be, you can also keep placing the unfinished alphabet cubes onto the consulting area. However, uh, the, the, it's going to be different uh, in terms of the scoring, okay? So in, at the end of the final stage, we are only looking at if you have finished uh, this whole mission or not. If you, for example, if you only only um, placed only four alphabet cubes onto the consulting area, which means you haven't actually finished the whole mission, you won't get any score, okay? So each, so it won't, it won't be counted individually, each of the alphabet cube. It won't be counted individually. Uh, we will just look at if you have finished, if you have finished the missions. If you have finished the missions like that, uh, M-A-K-E-X in the right order, in the correct order, and um, they're all onto, they're all uh, inside the, uh, the consulting area, then you will get 50 points uh, for finishing this mission. But if you haven't finished, or there will be, uh, or there is a wrong order like that, then you won't get any points. You won't get any points at all, okay? So in the final stage, like I just briefly introduced before, so these um, square box uh, will be installed right above uh, the pins of, it, of your own side, okay? So you will have to uh, somehow create a mechanical arm and then lift this black cube up and then insert it into this black uh, into this uh, box, this square box, okay? So these are the, the third uh, way to score during the final stage. And each of these black cube is worth 40 points, okay? So if you have successfully inserting all five black cubes into uh, the, the square boxes, uh, you will get 50 bonus points as well. So uh, you, if you have finished all five uh, black cubes, you will get uh, 40 times 5, so that's 200, and plus the 50 bonus points, so that's 250 just for this single mission. Okay, so that worth a lot. Um, so these are the scoring explanation, and um, let's look at the pins first. So at the automatic stage, it's worth 20 points each, and at the final stage, same, 20 points each, and alphabet cube, uh, so at the automatic stage, it worth, it's worth 30 points for each alphabet cubes. For example, if you have finished only two alphabet cubes like that, K and E, and it's in the correct order, that you will get two times 30, that's 60 points. At the end of the automatic stage, you will get 60 points for these, okay? And um, if you have finished all five alphabet cubes at the end of the automatic stage, sorry, in the correct order like that, 
then you will get 50 bonus points as well. So that's 30 times 5 plus 50. So that's 200 points for this single mission. Okay, but like I said before, at the end of the final stage, we are not looking at these alphabet cubes individually. We only look at uh, if this whole mission has been completed. Okay, so if it's not, if it's if one alphabet cube is missing or um, there's wrong order like that, then you won't get any points at all. Okay, only if you have. Um, successfully placed all five alphabet cubes onto the consulting area and it's in the correct order so you can get 50 points for finishing this mission okay because it's a lot easier because you can you can obviously use your Bluetooth controller to control the robots to um, to move around with it and then to finish this mission so it's going to be a lot easier than using your vision sensor to uh, to finish this motion uh, to finish this mission automatically okay so that's why we don't have uh, uh, the points uh, for, for, for finishing this individually, for finish each of the alphabet cube individually at the end of the final stage, that's why. Okay, um, and for the black cube, 40 points each, if you have, like I said, uh, successfully inserted all five black cubes into the five square boxes, you will get 50 bonus points. And not only that, the light box will be um, will be light will be lightened up as well automatically. Okay, so it's just a sign that you have finished. Wow, this this huge mission. Okay, and um, that's it for the program introduction. And, and next, I'm going to talk about the detailed rules. Uh, so I will just in explain these standing positions first. So. Uh, I, w I will skip the referee because the referee will, will know where they are standing. Uh, and for the, for the on-field, on-arena uh, observers and, uh, and operator, okay? So, each t uh, so you only have a limited space to move around. You can't actually cross to, to the other side, okay, obviously. And um, uh, for the team formation, each team will have, uh, each team has one operator, Operator means uh, the, the person who's holding the Bluetooth controller to control the robots. And you will have two observers. Observer will tell uh, essential information for the op to, to the operator. They are quite useful as well, especially during the modification stage. They can help uh, modify the robots. And there will be two observers on field for each team. So for each alliance, there will be two operators and four observers. Okay. And this is a very important concept, which is boundary state judgment. We'll use this, uh, these terms a lot uh, in the technical guide. And we'll have the first one completely in. Uh, it's pretty obvious if, if the prop or the robots that's completely inside uh, the designated area, that means just completely in. Um, we also have the concept of partially in. If, uh, if the prop or your robots uh, touches the, 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 the site of the designated area, that means you are partially inside um, that area. And completely out means there's no, uh, so this is just out of contact with that designated area. There's nowhere near it, so that's completely out. Okay? And uh, for the state judgment of the robots inside the starting area, okay, so before the match starts, the robots need to be completely inside the starting area okay so that's before the automatic stage starts before the whole match starts okay so it needs to be completely in before the referee can uh, can can start the competition okay and um, if you if you want to modify your robots at the end of the menu stage the robots only needs to be partially inside the starting area before you can you you are eligible to take the robots out of the arena and modify it Okay, so not completely in, it's partially in, okay? And after you have modified your robots, you want to put, you want to put it back to the arena, uh, you, you, can, you can only, you can put it partially inside the, the starting area, okay? You don't have to uh, put it completely inside the starting area, okay? And, and the third concept will be contact with the robots. Okay, so if, if the robots is touching, uh, for example, the pins when the referee is calculating the score. Okay, so at the end of the automatic stage, at, and at the end of the final stage. So there's two, 
two times that the referee is going to calculate the score during the match. Um, so if by then, if, they all, if your robot is touching the pin, um, so the pins will be considered as locked it down. Okay, so the opponents will score. Okay, and if the robot is touching the alphabet cube, for example, like this, and this particular alphabet cube will be uh, will not be counted. Okay, and if the robot is touching the black cube, it won't be counted as well. So, uh, for example, if your black cube has been already inserted inside the square box, but your robot is touching it like that, um, so it won't be counted, okay? And, and for the KO stage, we do actually have a KO uh, in this competition, okay? So KO means you have, you have successfully knocked down all 24 pins on the opponent's side, okay? So the match will end uh, immediately. So you can end this match in advance, so obviously, uh, you just win the match if you have KO your opponent, okay? All right, let's talk about the state judgments for the pins on the upper floor, okay? Um, so the concept of the pins that's initially placed onto the upper floor, it's quite different uh, to the ones that's initially placed onto the lower floor. So as we all know, there are 12 uh, pins on the upper floor initially, and there will be 12 pins on the lower floor as well. Okay, let's talk about the upper floor first. The pin, uh, so there's only one way that the pins, the pins are initially placed onto the upper floor is considered to be knocked down, okay? So there's one way, there's only one judgment for that. It is, it's completely out of contact with the upper floor. So it has to be knocked down, knock off the upper floor, okay? So if the pins is still if you manage to um, knock the pins down like that, but it's still staying on the upper floor, it will not, like I said, it will not be considered as knockdown. So the opponents will not score, okay? So you will have to uh, fully knock it off the, the upper floor. Um, so that's the only way that uh, this will count, okay? So if it's still staying on the upper floor, it will not be counted. Or um, the two pins on the upper floor is laying laying on each other, but they are still um, on top, still on the upper floor, then um, they will not be counted as well. Okay, so you will have to knock it off the floor. So it's out of contact with the upper floor like that, drop onto the ground, out of contact with the upper floor. So that's the only way that um, the pins is considered to be knocked down. But what if, uh, say you have knock off the pins, it's dropped onto the ground. It's not in contact with the upper floor. But your opponent's robots manage um, to put the pins, uh, lift it up, put it back to the upright position, whether, it's, whether they put the pins on the lower floor or on the upper floor even better. So it will not be counted as well because we are not uh, looking at the states during the match. We are only looking at the end of the competition, the state. Okay, so we're only looking at the state at the end of the competition. I don't care about what you do to the pins during the competition. Um, so as long as uh, it's as long as it's knocked down, like that, knocked off the uh, the upper floor and staying on the ground, and it's not in the upright position on the ground, then that's the only way that you can score. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, let's talk about the the pins on the lower floor. So the concept will be quite different you don't actually have to uh, knock, it, knock it down all the way like that, like that. It's laying onto the ground, it's dead, okay? You don't have to do that. Uh, as long as it's not in the upright position on the ground, so this is the upright position on the ground, so the bottom of the pins, it's uh, in complete contact with the ground, with the mat, okay? So that's upright position. As long as it's not in upright position, something like that, or knock off like that, um, so the pins will be considered as knockdown, even like that. It will be considered as knockdown and the opponents will score, okay? So it doesn't have to be fully down. If it's laying on each other, or as long as it's not in the upright position, then um, you will score. Okay. All right, let's move on to the alphabet cubes. Um, so there, there are three statements for the alphabet cubes. 
you have to fulfill them simultaneously before you can uh, before the alphabet cube will be considered as uh, as a valid score state okay um, so the first one let's look at statement a statement a says that the vertical projection of an alphabet cube is completely inside the platform or your consulting area okay so it needs to be fully inside your consulting area and it must be in direct contact with the upper surface of the platform of the consulting area okay so it needs to be uh, inside so that's the first first requirement the second requirement would be it has to be in contact with the upper upper surface of the consulting area okay so that's statement a if you are not sure about the exact area of the consulting area just go to technical guide um, so there's a figure right there um, I, I use a yellow frame um, to 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 fix the, the exact area of the of the consulting area okay so if you don't if you're not sure about uh, whether you are inside consulting area or not just go to technical guide and look at it and statement B statement B says that the side of an alphabet cube um, that contacts uh, the surface of the platform can be any angle okay so the bottom bottom of this alphabet cube can be uh, whether it's this or that or that so I don't care about the bottom as long as the the face that's facing your own pins like that that's facing you it needs to be in the correct form like that like K K like that it can be like that so that will, will not be counted okay so it needs to be the correct correct form like that okay um, so uh, so that's statement B and statement C says that uh, only two or more alphabet cubes are placed on the platform in the correct order uh, can be counted okay so if you have only placed one onto the consulting area like we can't we can't actually tell uh, what the order is so it will not be counted okay so you will need at least two alphabet cubes onto the consulting area before you can you can score okay what if there is a wrong order um, in the in th there's a wrong order like that so a and k that's in the wrong order okay but your m e x they are still valid you will say but they are not okay so as long as there is a wrong order existing in the series the whole mission will not be counted okay so uh, even if your you have got m e and x right then you you still can't score okay so if it has a wrong order then the whole thing just boom um, so that's statement c in terms of the black cube that will be much easier as long as you uh, as long as the black cube stay inside the square chambers without external support then you will be considered as score scored okay um, but if it's like that okay but it still stays inside the square square chamber without external support it will still be counted okay so this is this will be still counted and if you can do that even better okay if the robot is touching if the robots or other props is touching the black cube uh, at the end of the final stage it will not be counted okay so it needs to stay inside without external support so that's for the black cube and that finishes all the, the detailed rules explanation and I will move on to a Q&A session so I have collected quite a few commonly asked questions uh, the first one will be are the camera module and the Raspberry Pi 3 module B plus included in the 2020 Makers Premier Ultimate Warrior kit the answer is the answer is yes they are included and we have pre-installed a SD card uh, into the Raspberry Pi as well. So you, um, so we have already we have input all the presets, uh, all the all the parameters for the for the camera uh, in inside the SD card, and that's already in your official package. So after you receive your official package, you just open it up, connect your uh, your camera module with the Raspberry Pi. You can just use them directly. Okay. The second question is, does the mat included in the 2020 Makers Premier Ultimate Warrior Arena kit? The answer is no. Okay, 
um, but there is no line following uh, function on the mat this year uh, so uh, like you, you, you will not rely heavily on the mat okay but if you still need the mat just for practice um, you can still buy it you can buy it online uh, we'll have a link online you can just buy, the, buy it from our, our, our supplier directly or uh, you can print it out yourself we have a document right here uh, I can share with share to you with um, I can share to you uh, and you can just use that document go to a go to a like a printing shop and then print it yourself uh, but it's going to be quite big I'm talking about um, 5.4 times 6.6 .6, that's how big uh, the mat is the third question is can I use pneumatic devices in Makes Premier Ultimate Warrior yes you can use pneumatic devices, but you, but there's a limitation on that. You can only use the make block, uh, make block pneumatic devices, okay? And you can buy the pneumatic devices package from Makes separately. The fourth question is: Do I have to use Raspberry Pi three three model B plus provided in the Makes Premier Ultimate Warrior kit? The answer is not necessarily. You can use other Raspberry Pi, but uh, as long as it's Raspberry Pi 3B+, plus, okay? So you can't use any other versions of the Raspberry Pi because it needs to be compatible with uh, the MakeBlock de Make developed uh, power shield. So we have a power shield that's going to be inserted uh, onto the Raspberry Pi, okay? So, uh, so only Raspberry Pi 3B+, plus can be compatible. All right. So the fifth question is, do I have to use the camera module provided in the 2020 MKS Ultimate Premier kit? Um, the answer is, again, not necessarily. Uh, there's no limitations whatsoever onto the sensors. I mean, you can use other sensors, uh, like other third-party sensors as well. So we have left uh, the 40 pins, GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi for you to connect. Uh, with other sensors, okay, so it, you don't have to use make block sensor if you don't want to, okay. And the sixth and the last question is, uh, do I have to use Raspberry Pi as the main control board? Um, the answer is no, not necessarily as well. Um, you can you can just use Noah Pi. There's no problem, uh, but you are not going to finish the uh, the automatic mission for the alphabet cubes because you you can't use any smart camera on Noah Pi. Okay, so it's suggested, so it's recommended to use uh, Raspberry Pi. So your Raspberry Pi will be like your, I just give a metaphor right here. So your Raspberry Pi will be just like your brain, and your Noah Pi is going to be like your nerve system, okay? So the Raspberry Pi controls the Noah Pi. But if you don't want to use Raspberry Pi, you think it's too hard or too complicated, that's all right, you just use Noah Pi, and you can still finish the majority of the order missions okay so that's it for all and thank you for watching if you have any questions you can feel free to contact uh, our makers facebook official 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 facebook account okay if you have any questions just feel free to ask and we will answer that as soon as possible okay thank you for watching